Hi everyone. Um, my name is Mina and um, well I'm here to talk to you about why artificial is important to me. And so it all started with the summer school that I attended last year in year 10 for my work experience. And uh, what we got to do, or what the summer school kind of benefited, was that it allowed me to kind of understand what was involved in architecture. And being like process, being in the process of actually getting to experience it was very beneficial to me because it's, that was the main reason why I kind of chose it. And so, um, well, further on in my years, like last year or this year, I think, I got involved in a project called Pro Project Platform, and that is where I, I blogged on Zaha Hadi. And basically, I kind of got kind of encouraged to kind of contact her and kind of ask her why, um, what kind of, what makes her uh, kind of interested in architecture and, and how she can kind of advise the younger generation to kind of get involved in this. But unfortunately she didn't kind of reply back. But yeah, um, hopefully I'm, oh, yeah. I'm gonna, um, I've kind of emailed her again to kind of kind of request if I could have an interview with her, but hopefully that will kind of happen in the future years. Um, but from the picture here, it's a school which I kind of saw from her uh, designs, and that kind of encouraged me to to kind of contact her because I, because my school is not as developed as hers. I I'm very interested in like building schools, like especially my school because it's very um, like old if you put it that way. Um, this is my school right now. Um, it's going into its school and it's in Spark Hill. And I'm going to get 11, and right now, um, school itself is quite not as contemporary as as the last presentation that you just saw. Well, um, well, here is like a classroom of a building, and it's quite dull if you see it. It's really, really boring. And um, um, like previously, the school was actually um, designing classroom which the biggest uh, the boarding schools for the future uh, kind of funded but unfortunately that kind of kind of cut down and but we did have one classroom which was, which was transformed and it was very very uh, creative in a way and compared to this one it's it's ten times better and then because uh, right now I'm in my uh, I'm in my last final year that I go to school and I'm kind of finishing my GCSEs I've kind of chosen Joseph Chamberlain for my next college and my next kind of place to study at. And the reason why I've chosen Joseph Chamberlain was because of the architect itself. Because once I went to this college, I kind of fell in love with it because of how it was structured. And that was the reason why I kind of allowed myself to access, to actually get into this college because of its structure and how it kind of puts me in a position where I can learn. Whereas if I was in school, I, I would feel it would be very boring and very kind of kind of very strict and, and stuff like that. Whereas I'm very creative and I like to kind of get influenced by my surroundings. So Joseph, Joseph Chamberlain does that very well, and so I'm so I've kind of enrolled there, and hopefully in September I will start and kind of do my art because I'm I'm gonna carry on with my architecture and my passion for architecture. That I'm going to actually choose um, art and graphics as well as sounds in history for my, my A levels. And then, right, you guys have like a, a little task, a little mission. Below, you'll have a cute card that says yes and no, or if you flip it around. Right? And like, I will be asking you questions and on your own opinions. You guys can flash the card yes or no to me, depending on what you think. But there's a twist. I might pick out individuals and kind of explain why you kind of chose that. Right, the question of mine is Are Wells High Schools important? So. Oh, that's not. It was it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey. You, sir, why did you choose yes? Well, as Chief Executive Mayor, I'm paid to say that. <laughs> so, um, I, you know, I, I do believe that people are, are influenced by 
our surroundings. I, I, I personally feel it that uh, as somebody who's you know, reached a mature age, gone through a number of different workplaces, mm -hmm. and actually, because of uh, my family history, I moved around a whole number of schools. I can contrast my experience at different schools and at different workplaces as, a, as, a, as an adult and see how I've responded personally to that. And I, I feel I respond to well designed places. So that's why I say Anyone this. Anyone who disagrees? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, the next question. Does learning work if the school is falling down? Ready? Set. Go! We want a baby. I know, but because education still happens, and therefore, if um, you, you all talk to teachers who actually say the surroundings don't really make a great deal of difference, and therefore, if we've got a good education, good teachers, and a good structure, and a good curriculum, then that's the only reason why the surroundings um, prevent that from happening. Well, there's no doubt that if uh, the surroundings are even better, and the teaching can be even better because the opportunities are better, but good teachers don't require necessarily a fantastic space to be teaching. They just can't. Okay, uh, you, Miss, on the front, in the yellow shirt. Oh, really? Oh, oh. Um, I said yes. Um, I, um, well, I'm between yes and no. Um, I think that the school ethos, fundamentally, the way it's be taught, you still learn and it comes down to good teaching. But I think no, in fact, you can learn from the surroundings. You, you can learn from the way a building functions, having an understanding of your environment. And I, and I think a lot of aspiration can be learned from buildings themselves. So I kind of think between yes and no. <laughs> uh, you missed it the Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I kind of agree with the first gentleman in a way that because I come from a, from a very different background where we never had, I come from India, so there was no, no funding eventually in place for a school building or anything. And uh, the main inspiration comes from the community and the teachers themselves. And it's, it's that, that role model and the inspiration that you get from that is which I think is much more important. And to an extent, the building is, is, uh, is subservient to that sort of uh, role modeling and, and uh, basically good teachers and a good structure in place. So. I want to uh, just say, I think. I think learning can work if the school is falling down, but for me, the problem with schools falling down is that if you're a young person and you're going to school, um, actually, that's a representation to me of the state. You know, this is this is how the state values you as a young person. <coughs> so, you know, should should you know is your value you know as a young person really being reflected in the fact that the state doesn't think it's important to pay for schools? I think it's a real shame actually that probably learning isn't happening at its best because there are so many concerns about leaky windows or ceilings falling down or not enough fresh air in classrooms. So learning is working, but I sort of want to change the question a bit and say is learning working at its best and is it you know unvaluing people? Um, question three: Should we have standardised school design? Uh, you miss at the back of the screen. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't, I, I don't think we should have standardised school designs, but there's an argument that some things, it's, if some things work, well, then it can be shared among some of one school. But I think that um, schools are individual, communities are individual, they have different needs, and the buildings need to be responsive to that. There's no, you know, the, I found this in even Birmingham, the schools that the three different schools we put together, each of those different schools have had a different need, but we've been putting more building that's something that needs to be met. Um we say pink, blue, white. <laughs> <laughs> um, absolutely not. I, I think both lectures have, uh, have, have expressed all, all what we feel the most of us tonight. But uh, yeah, that it's, it's a good opportunity to build to build a piece of uh, community architecture uh, in its right setting as well. Uh, I think the one in Wales, I think, is a great example of, of that. I mean, who would want a, a Tesco superstore on the top of that hill? You were saying the good Yeah, I just think sometimes schools are such such basic help, and that's a shame. So, is he on the top? <coughs> um, yeah. Is that enough? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Alright, the last question. Should young people be involved in designing their learning
Um, I, I think um, it's very important, particularly when we're starting to look at the, well, if it, if it, well looking at refurb, which is going to be more and more prevalent, um, and, and, and part rebuild. What we've got to really understand what's working and what's not working about buildings. So I don't understand how we can do that without talking to the users properly. So for me, that's a very strong yes. And it probably even more important with the reduced budgets that are available. Thank you. Absolutely.